Calaroga Shark Media. Hello and welcome to Palace Intrigue. I am your host, Mark Francis. Prince Harry and Meghan Markle have earned the nickname the Uninvitables among their friends after being snubbed from various key social events in recent years. A source close to the couple's London social circle mentioned that high society is deliberately excluding the Sussexes from guest lists out of fear of social repercussions. Harry and Meghan are being left off guest lists for friends' weddings and other events due to their estrangement from the royal family. The source explained, There is genuine fear that if the Sussexes are invited to a wedding or a christening, it could leave that family excluded from the social circuit, which would be one of the biggest faux pas imaginable. They are being called the Uninvitables by friends. Earlier this year, it was reported that Prince Harry and Meghan were excluded from the guest list for his lifelong friend Hugh Grosvenor's wedding to Olivia Henson. Prince Harry declined his save-the-date invitation after learning that his brother, Prince William, was set to take a leading role. William ended up being an usher at the wedding held at Chester Cathedral on June 7th, which reportedly left Harry fuming. There was very much a sense of confusion over whether Harry was uninvited or turned it down because William had been asked to be an usher, said the source. Either way, Harry was fuming. He had also been a close friend of Hughes for many years, and they even went traveling to Africa together. Additionally, the Sussexes are supposedly not invited to join the rest of the royal family at Balmoral this summer. According to a well-placed source, they were left off the official guest list for the firm's August summit to allow King Charles and Princess Kate to enjoy family time after a challenging year. GB News' Patrick Christie's suggested to royal expert Kinsey Schofield that H&M surely use the grandkids as a way back into the picture with Charles. Schofield said, if Harry did want a way back, he could use the excuse that despite his personal beef with King Charles, he wants his children to have a relationship with their grandfather. It would be the perfect way back, wouldn't it? Royal expert Hannah Furness told a Right Royal podcast, there is quite a heavy narrative that Meghan and the children won't be coming back until they can resolve this security issue to their liking. But Harry will certainly be coming and going. King Charles' October trek to Australia and Samoa has been significantly shortened to just 10 days, down from the originally planned three weeks, according to the Daily Beast. While the trip indicates Charles is managing his cancer treatment well, it also highlights that the reigning monarch has limitations, despite his efforts. There has been a lot of debate in the palace about how much Charles should be doing. There are plenty of people who think a long-haul foreign tour is unwise when you have cancer. An insider told the outlet, but ultimately the decisions are coming from the top and the problem is he knows that if he doesn't do a trip to Australia as king now, it would probably never happen. Charles' travel plans were confirmed in a statement by Buckingham Palace where a spokesperson revealed that the trip would no longer extend to New Zealand due to his doctor's orders. The fact that Charles is still attending, albeit for a shorter duration, suggests his health is stable enough for the visit. Australia is a very important country to him. It's no secret that there are Republican rumblings down under, and he wants to do everything he can to keep the Aussies on board, a friend of Charles told the Daily Beast, but it's clear he wouldn't be going unless he was on the mend and his doctors thought he could handle it. It's a hugely encouraging sign. When asked if the removal of New Zealand from Charles' itinerary hinted at deeper health issues, the friend responded, I think that would be a churlish interpretation. He has been very open about having cancer. It is absolutely plain to see that he is doing really well. The new quotes come amid previous reports that Charles has been in denial over his packed schedule. Sources indicated that Fiji was also supposed to be part of the tour, though it was not mentioned upon confirming his Australia visit and his absence from New Zealand. Following the announcement, the palace noted that Charles and Camilla sent their warmest thanks and good wishes to all parties for their continued support and understanding. An insider added, it's very sad about New Zealand, but I think it's just the reality of trying to work while being treated for cancer. You can't do everything. Palace and will be right back. We have a two-star review that came in on Apple Podcasts. Retitle this podcast. This podcast should be called, I Hate Harry and Meghan with the Intensity of Three Red Hot Burning Suns. Well, Anonymous, I really love that title, too. Maybe there's a spin-off there somewhere. Brian May, the guitarist from Queen, whose hits include Bohemian Rhapsody, Don't Stop Me Now, and 
Three red-hot burning suns celebrated his birthday recently, which gave the tabloids the chance to dust off this story on a very slow news day. May had previously criticised Prince Harry and Prince William, expressing his disapproval of their actions. The guitarist once stated that he felt sickened by their behaviour, comparing it to 19th century supporters of slavery. May's comments came after reports surfaced of the prince's participating in hunting trips just weeks before pledging to protect Africa's critically endangered wildlife. In 2014, the Royal Brothers returned from a trip where they reportedly shot wild boar and stags on the estate of William's godfather, the Duke of Westminster in Cordoba, Spain. Photos of Harry standing over the body of a water buffalo, smiling and holding a gun further fueled the controversy. At the time, May remarked, it made me feel sick. This is right at the heart of the problem we are looking at in this government. It's the whole attitude of the privileged classes. You can rescue rhinos and elephants in Africa, but kill at will anything you want if you're rich. It's not logical, justifiable, or humane, and is the same as people in the 19th century trying to justify slavery. May's remarks came shortly after William pledged to destroy all 12,000 ivory artifacts in Buckingham Palace to send a message to illegal elephant poachers. This collection included valuable items, such as a throne from India that belonged to Queen Victoria. In 2020, it was reported that Prince Harry gave up hunting after marrying Meghan Markle, selling his handmade rifles worth £50,000 before moving to North America. However, Prince William continued the family's hunting tradition and faced criticism for taking his son, Prince George, to shoot grouse at Balmoral when he was just seven years old. The Paley Centre for Media will honour Tyler Perry at its Paley Honours Gala on December 4th in Beverly Hills. The event held at the Beverly Wilshire Hotel will celebrate Perry's extensive career as an actor, writer, director, producer, studio owner, and philanthropist. The Paley Center has enlisted some of Perry's closest friends and colleagues for its Paley Honors Tribute Host Committee. This includes Harry and Meghan. Perry is the godfather to their daughter, Lilibet, and offered his house to the couple after their exit from the royal family. We're aware that we've been talking an awful lot about Harry and Meghan lately, but with Kate making just two appearances since Christmas, there hasn't been much else to stir the royal watches. As an example, the papers got all the way down the royal list to writing a fluff piece about Zara Tyndall. Us Weekly sourced an insider revealing that Zara is also very close to Charles and has been a huge help to both him and William during his awful year. Zara has been a breath of fresh air. She's loved by the public. She's fun and unpretentious. Zara's husband, rugby icon Mike Tyndall, also shares a close bond with Prince William, fostered by their mutual love of sports. Last month, Zara and Mike, along with their children, joined Prince William, Prince George and Princess Charlotte at the Taylor Swift Eras concert in London. Isn't that all exciting? You can see where Harry and Meghan are the uninvitables might be a little better for downloads. And there you have it. If you'd like to email us, our address is thepalaceintrigue at gmail.com. Please follow us on Spotify, Apple, or the app of your choice. And I'm Mark Francis. My thanks to John McDermott. This is I Hate Harry and Meghan with the intensity of three hot burning suns. Good time.